Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Charlie Craven Show. Um, today, I'm going to tie for you a very simple little pattern um, called a mole nidge that is a takeoff of my original mole fly, which um, is probably the most effective dry fly I've ever fished. And this is a uh, slightly skinnier version made more specifically to fish uh, for emerging midges. So I'm going to start off with a TMCO 2487. This is uh, a curve, curve shank hook, but with the down eye. And you specifically want the down eyed version. Um, it affects the way the fly sits in the water. We want the fly, I'll show you when we're done, the way we want the fly to sit in the water. But um, we want the, uh, the eye to basically lay on the surface and the body of the fly to hang below. Um, but like I said, this is a very simple fly. I'm going to start off with some, some 14 knot vivas. Uh, and I'm going to use black here. And I know that might be a little hard to see, but um, you'll deal with it. I, I believe in you. But I'm going to start this thread just up behind the eye here. And I'll just dress, oh, maybe the front third or so of the shank. And leave the thread hanging right behind the eye. Now, this is a, a fairly dark little fly, and it sits very low in the water, which is you know part of the reason why it works so well. Um, but what I want to do is I'm going to add just a few strands of fluorofiber. And this is white. And what I've got here is three strands. You can see they're, they're fairly shiny. Um, so three strands of white fluorofiber, and I'm going to catch these here just behind the eye. Just take a couple turns back over them, and I'll fold them forward again, like so. Uh, you guys can't see, but there's one little frayed piece of thread right there. There was, but there's not anymore because I fixed it. Uh, so we've just got that, that little tuft of white fluorofiber sticking out over the hook eye, and that's to give a little reflection to the wing, make it a little easier to see. Now the, the wing on this fly, this is an, an advanced wing fly, which means the wing is going to stick out over the hook eye. So rather than lay back over the body, it's going to stick out over the hook eye um, and is meant to imitate the, the midge pupa as the adult is emerging from the husk. Um, so with that, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take two CDC feathers. And if you're tying these really tiny, this is an 18 I'm tying just for the sake of the camera. Uh, but if you're tying these really tiny, one CDC feather is plenty. Um, and this is just a natural gray. Any shade of gray will work. I don't don't really care for white. I think it's too bright, um, but I've got two in the case of this 18, uh, just natural dun colored uh, CDC feathers. And I've got the tips separated there. And I'm going to tie those in just with a turn and I'm going to pull them down to about a shank length long, like so. And I'll start to wrap back over them. And then I'll come in from the back and I want to kind of lay those butt ends down and trim them at an angle so that I can continue down and build a nice smooth taper as I come down. So I'll give you a little idea of what we've got going on there so far, very simple. Now for the body on this fly, I'm gonna use a stripped and dyed peacock quill. Um, and you can see on this, on this quill, the bottom edge there is the dark edge. And whenever you wrap a peacock quill, it's gonna have a dark edge, this is just like a biot. Um, it's going to have a dark edge, and I want the dark edge to be tied in so that it's toward the back of the hook, so that it is, it is the following edge, and that'll help create the segmented body that we're after. Um, and you can see these are pre-stripped and dyed, so there's a little bit of hurl left on the very tip end. So I'm going to tie this in. I'm actually going to cut that off. And tie this in on my near side of the hook here. and just come forward over that tip end. You don't wanna go and tie it in right by the very tip, um, though you'll be tempted to do that. Uh, there's plenty of length here for, for midge size flies, so you don't have to worry about running out of, of quill. Uh, hopefully that's not famous last words here as I get into this fly, but um, you don't need to tie it in by the very, very tip. Um, it'll almost always break and it just makes it much harder to work with. Um, now that dyed quill I had soaked, um, you can soak it in just warm water. You can stick one in your mouth as you tie and um, uh, soak it that way. You just want to get it soaked a little bit so it's a little bit more pliable. And once I've got that tied in, I've built just a bit of a taper there. You can see how smooth that thread taper is. Uh, I want to try to keep that as smooth and even as possible. And I'll grab the, the butt end of the quill in my hackle pliers. And I'm going to begin to wrap forward. And make sure you miss your hook point here. You can see I'm just slightly overlapping these turns so that that dark edge becomes our rib as we come through. You can see it makes a, a beautifully ribbed body. And true to form, like I said, we uh, 
uh, didn't run out of quill before we got to the to the uh, base of the wing there. So there's plenty of length. So don't feel like you've got to shortchange yourself. And I'll tie that off with a couple of turns and come in and trim that out. I'm just going to build a little bit of a thread head or thread uh, uh, thorax here just to smooth that off. And I'll sweep the wing and the fluorofiber up and bring the thread to the front for just a couple turns. And I'm going to get my little midge whip finisher here. If you don't have a Tiemco midge whip finisher like this, you should get one. It's uh, much more efficient than everything else I've seen out there. Um, the knot works the same way. It's just a, a more efficient little tool. Uh, and is really well made. So there's my tool endorsement for this video. So after I've whip finished that, I'm going to come in, I'm going to trim this fluorofiber just a little longer than the wing, just a bit. You can see that's maybe, oh, maybe a quarter longer than the wing, just a bit proud of what the wing is. And then one last thing I like to do to these before I, I call them done um, is I want to coat over that body with some sort of resin. You can use regular head cement, um, and honestly, that'll be fine. Um, the resin, UV resin, um, and I'm, I'm going to use Solar as Bone Dry Plus here. Let's see if I can get that on the screen there for you. Bone Dry Plus. Uh, I'm just going to take a, a little drop of this. It's not really going to take much. And I'm going to put that on the body, including that thread head, from head to tail, and coat all the way around the body. Make sure I get the bottom. Try not to get it in your hook eye if you could help it. This Bone Dry Plus is, is damn near water thin, so it's very easy to smooth out. You can see how that brightens up that body a bit. And I'll give that just a couple rotations because I fiddled around with it, kind of get that smoothed out. And then I'm gonna hit it with my UV lamp from fairly far away as I rotate the fly. And what that'll do is allow the the resin to cure slowly uh, rather than all at once. When you cure your resin all at once um, with a blast of light right up close to it, it cures very quickly and it doesn't seem to adhere near as well. Um, so I want to hit that from, from far away and you can see I'm kind of shining the light on and off of it. Um, and that's just allowing it to cure a little bit more slowly. So once I've got that done, I'll uh, put my cap back on my resin so I don't spill that. But that is our finished moldage. You can see that, uh, that strip peacock body is very simple, but gosh, it sure comes out pretty, doesn't it? Um, that's a crimson colored quill. I do these in olive and natural and, um, you know, you can just use a dyed black or just even plain black thread, um, uh, quill, um, you know, any variety of body styles for this, but, um, that peacock quill is pretty tough to beat for, for realism. Uh, purple's a good one too. Um, super simple little fly. Even Lance Egan can, can tie this one. I'm pretty sure. I've not seen him tie this, but um, this is really pretty similar to, to all the stuff he does tie. Um, but, uh, you know, I think now with the video, I don't think I'll have any problem with it at all. So uh, thanks for watching. That was the Mole Midge on the Charlie Craven Show. Take care. We'll see you next time around.